Hey there everyone, my name is Matt Heimlich and welcome to another tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. Today I'm going to be showing a very quick overview of one way that Blender can fit into a larger pipeline. Blender kind of operates as a Swiss army knife of sorts in terms of features and functionality. Uh, but oftentimes when working on a project or as part of a team you'll be tasked with using uh, a different piece of software. On top of this, some artists are just more familiar and comfortable doing certain tasks in another package, uh, myself included. In the past, this meant fumbling around with different export settings, jumping into other utilities, or sometimes even two or three just to get the correct file or data output. It could also mean doing lots of extra cleanup work after each export or after each import, which would cost artists lots and lots of time. Uh, but today things are a lot different, with higher quality import and export tools, as well as with a number of official and semi-official app link tools, uh, getting data into and out of Blender is relatively painless. One example of this is the GoBee app link tool for ZBrush, uh, which is what I'm going to be showing off today. I'm going to show where to get it, I'm going to show how to install it, I'm going to give a quick example of the kinds of data that can be quickly and easily ported between the two tools with the click of a single button. So let's jump in and get started. This is the model we're going to be using for this part. It's a very simple head model that I just worked up. Uh, if I hit tab, you can see that I've already set up UVs for it. The first thing you're going to need to do to use this add-on is to download it. You can get it at this address. Uh, we will include the link under the video so you can get right to it. Uh, this is the wiki page for the uh, exporter. As you can see, it says it's for Blender 2.65. It works just fine in 2.67. Here are some links. This links to the ZBrush Central thread, uh, where there's some useful information on it if you're having a little bit of trouble. And these are the download links. Currently, there are only download links for Mac and Windows. Uh, down here is a little bit of info about it, and uh, here is the installation instructions as well, if you are the kind of person who wants to see those written out, uh, rather than what I'm going to show you here in the video. So first thing you need to do is download for your platform. So I'll go ahead and download for Windows. Uh, it's a very small add-on, so it's quick to download. Go ahead and extract that. The first thing you want to do is go into the ZBrush folder and grab the Blender folder. And you're going to extract that to the, you're going to go to your main hard drive, which for me is my C drive. You're going to go to Users public, and in public you will find your Pixelogic folder. You're going to open Pixelogic and select GoZ Apps. The GoZ Apps is your destination folder um, for installing the GoZ plugin for ZBrush. So I'm going to go ahead and extract there. As you can see, it's going to tell me that uh, the file already exists because it's already installed for me. So I'll get hit and go ahead and hit Yes to All. Next, you want to jump into the Blender folder and grab the Gobi Add-on 265 folder. And you just want to extract that to wherever your Blender um, add-on folder is. For me, that is C drive, Blender, 2.67, scripts, add-ons. Hit OK. Again, it's going to tell me it's already there, so I'm just going to write over it. Uh, and that is all you have to install. The only other step that you have to do is you have to jump into ZBrush, go to your preferences, go to GoZ, and if you've added that folder to your GoZ apps folder, you will have a button here that says Path to Blender. Uh, as you can see, mine already has one. You're going to need to click that. It's going to search for a couple minutes. Uh, to try and find where you might have Blender installed on your computer. So I'm going to pause and come back uh, after it's found that for me. Okay, as you can see for me it says a version of Blender was found and that's just because I've already directed it, uh, ZBrush to where it is. On yours it will most likely say a version of Blender was not found. All you have to do in that case is hit Browse, locate where you have Blender installed on your machine, and just select the Blender.exe and hit Open. Obviously for a Mac, you're going to search for the equivalent executable on your Mac system. So that's all we need to do in ZBrush. Uh, we will hop out of there. The last step is in Blender to go to your File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and just search for Go B. 
as you can see, it's already turned on for me. If you look right here at the top of the screen, you see this little icon that you probably don't have yet. That is the Gobi app link button. So if I turn that off, you see it disappears. If I turn it on, you see it comes back. Uh, what that also does is it replaces this uh, blender icon here uh, and makes that a button as well. On the left is the button to go to ZBrush and the blender icon becomes a button to come back from ZBrush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click this go to ZBrush button. It will turn on ZBrush. All right, in ZBrush, this little uh, window has popped up. It says the topology of the mesh has changed. Um, this means I had this model or a model of the same name in ZBrush uh, at one point. And since then, I've made some topological changes in Blender. Uh, you can either hit yes to transfer the high resolution details or hit no. I'm going to hit no just because uh, I'm not sure what is saved on that old one. And uh, it's more than likely that I don't even need it at this point. There we go. OK. So I'm going to hide that. I'm just going to drag out to place my object on the stage that I just imported. I'm going to hit T so I can go into Edit, snap it to a front view, and make it full frame. And there you can see we have the object imported from Blender. If I jump up into the Z plugin and go to the UV master, I can hit Use Existing UV Scenes. And if I hit Flatten, you'll see that all of my UVs are correct uh, imported from Blender. So I will unflatten that so I can work on the actual model. I'm going to do a quick uh, projection pane of this head um, just to show how textures are transferred back and forth between Blender and ZBrush. Uh, but I'm not going to show it on camera just because uh, that's not really the focus of this tutorial. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, here we are uh, after I've done my projection paint. It took me maybe five, ten minutes in uh, ZBrush just using their projection paint tools. So uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sculpt on here just a little bit so you can uh, see how the shape changes and how that works going back and forth in between Blender and ZBrush. So I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe bring his eyebrows out, give him kind of a caveman look. <laughs> That's a little extreme, but it'll work for our purposes. So. What you want to do, because this is a poly paint, this is actually like a vertex paint in Blender. Uh, you could transfer this back, but this is 1.4 million polygons, really not what you need going back to Blender. Uh, so you can go and create just a texture map from that. So I'll do new from poly paint. That goes ahead and creates that for us. So as you can see in the little thumbnail, the uh, UVs are all correctly set up for us already. And all we need to do now is hit go Z. And what that's going to do is it's going to drop this back to basic level, uh, attach the texture to it, and make that uh, ready to go over to Blender. Uh, the other thing you might have to do your first time is click this little R icon and click Blender. Uh, but for me, that's already set up as the uh, app that it's going to be linking to. So now I'll go back into Blender. All I need to do now is click the little Blender icon, which again is the new import button with this add-on. So I'm going to click that, and I can go ahead and delete the old model. And here's our new one. As you can see, the eyebrows are sculpted out just like I did in ZBrush. And if I go ahead and bring up the Properties panel, and go to my Materials, uh, first I'm going to go over to Blender Internal just to show you how that works. Uh, this has already completely been set up in Blender internal. It's already got the skin and everything. So I'm going to turn off the specular and go into the new uh, render mode for Blender internal. Turn on a hemi lamp. And as you can see, that is already set up here for us. If I hop over to Cycles Render, you can see it doesn't have anything right now, but that's just because the material isn't set up properly. So I'll click Use Nodes and let me expand this out a little bit. I'll go to color, select image texture, and the image is already loaded in, so I just click here, and there we are. We've got our textured model from ZBrush into Blender in uh, just one or two clicks. Uh, very, very easy to set up, very, very easy to use, and a great and handy tool for anyone who is familiar with working within ZBrush. Uh, so that concludes this short tutorial. I hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, I definitely hope to make more tutorials on working with Blender as part of a larger pipeline if there is a lot of interest in this. So leave a comment. Let me know what you thought.
and I will see you next time.